come back in. Amen. Amen. So let's, as, as, as you stand in, let's stand for the reading of the word today. Hallelujah. I want to greet those in Facebook, their faithful ones who stand with me every time I come online. Lydia, I bless you. Pastor Calava, I bless you. Today we're going to read from Psalm 1, 1 to 3, and Matthew 5, 13 to 20. And the Word of God is God Himself. Jesus was, is the Word in flesh. So as we read it, it's going to touch your heart. And that's why it's important that we walk with our Bibles, use our Bibles. Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Amen. Matthew 5, from verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For assuredly I say to you, till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle will by no means pass from the law till all is fulfilled. Whoever therefore breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches men to do so shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever does and teaches them, he shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Let's pray. Father, this is your word, and the people who are listening are your sheep, the ones that you bled and died for. And so today, as the word goes forth, not only from this house, but all across the nation, all across the nations. Father, let your word go forth and touch hearts. Awaken hearts to the beauty of Jesus. Holy Spirit, lift Jesus up in this place today. Use me as your vessel. Let the anointing that comes from you, Holy Spirit, fall on me and anoint the hearts and the ears of the hearers, that their eyes may see Jesus. And thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. You can go ahead and be seated. We not only celebrate our 20th year as a ministry, but today begins our second year in this building. And I'm excited at what Jesus is getting ready to do for this second year. Amen. 
So our plumbing, something went wrong. And my husband saw the water gushing up from out in the yard. And so he went down into the yard and he dug this pit. I mean, this deep, deep pit to get to the pipe. And one day I went out there as he was in that pit and I felt for him. I mean, the sweat was pouring down his eyes and he was in the pit so low that I could only see the tip of his head and it was muddy and he was dirty and, and I, just, I just knew that I had to stand there and pray for my husband. And as I stood, because no, nobody, my son-in-law did come one day from work and help him dig, but nobody else would come over and help. So here he is in this digging. And and as I, I, I stood there at that pit with a bottle of water in my hand to give him, I looked behind and I saw these trees so tall and majestic. And whisper, a whisper was in my ear. It says, men like trees walking. And I remember the scripture, and I stood tall. Because, I mean, I was in despair. He was down there. This is not the first day that he was down in that hole. And he couldn't get to that thing. And and, and I just started praying. I, I saw myself as a tree standing tall. So I pushed my back back, and I stood straight and tall. And I looked at those trees, and I started to act like those trees majestic hands lifted and i started praying and asking the angels the lord to send his angels and as i prayed he found that leak god give me strength and confidence to pray with authority and before too long the thing that was giving him a difficult time was fixed, and it's fixed to this day, and he didn't have to go back in that pit, just covered, filled it back up again. I prayed until he was done. I would move. I stood in that spot in that sun and looked at those trees and wouldn't move until he was done. In the book of Mark chapter 8, verse 23, Jesus took a blind man by the hand and led him out of town. And then he put some spit, his own spit, on the eyes of the man. And then he asked the man, the blind man, what do you see? And the blind man looked up, just like I looked up that day. And he said, I see men as trees walking. I see men as trees walking. That's the first time in the Bible that Jesus had to pray twice. Did Jesus mess up? No, he didn't. And this is what I want you to see today. What Jesus did, he overreached. When he put his hand and his spit, his own spit on that man's eye, that man saw in a different dimension. He saw the men but the men were like trees. Think of it. Think of yourself as a tree, tall and majestic. Jesus wasn't messing up. That was his power being observed. And the man's ability to receive Jesus' power. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, this is a scripture that I come back to often. And tell the Lord, I want the same. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul said, It's not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ 14 years ago. I don't know if it's in the body or out of the body. I cannot tell. Only God knows. But. This man was caught up in the third heaven. I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows how 
that this man was caught up in paradise and heard unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. And I always want to know, what did he hear? What did he hear when he was caught up in heaven that day? Just like that man saw men as trees walking, he tapped into a different dimension. And I want to tell you, young people, and all who are listening, this is the hour when God is looking for those who are willing to tap into that place, that place where unspeakably events are seen. He's looking for men and women and children who choose to believe him over man. He's looking for church to not be the same as it was before 2020. Men and women and children whose hearts choose to glorify God, not self nor man. And so I want to say today, do it again, Lord. May he find us here in this building. And you who are watching, God bless you, Pastor Kavala. May he find you worthy. And what makes you worthy? Is it your good works? No, never. It's the fact that you believe in Jesus. Believe who he is and believe what he done. Men as trees walking. We're supposed to see in that dimension, especially in this day and age, when things are getting out of control on the outside of us. We have a glimpse of this with Jesus. In John 3.13, Jesus was talking, and he said something that made me stop and ponder. He says, no man ascended up to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. And I understood that. But then he said this, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. I want to repeat that. He said, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Now, Jesus was standing right there, talking to his disciples, but here he is seen in a different dimension. He's seen into heaven. He said, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Jesus had the ability of switching from earth to heaven, of even keeping the two as he worked from the... And, and this is what we need to do. We need to work from heaven to the earth. But as Christians, we're working too much from the earth to heaven. Listen to this. This weekend, I was so disturbed. Because, I don't know about you, but sometimes, I don't know if it's because they hear me talk or what, things will pop up on my YouTube feed. And it suddenly started popping up, enemies of the church, and different videos pop up, and I was so shocked and amazed at what I'm hearing is happening in some of the mainstream churches, churches that for long, denominations that for long stood on the word of God, now they're backtracking. One pastor even said, the Old Testament should be thrown out. He said, I mean, I'm listening to him. They took a video of him saying this. And, 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 and I'm amazed. And Jesus said this, and I want you to hear this. And all of us who claim we're born again, we've got to get to a place where we too can say this. Jesus said in John 14, 30, hereafter, I will not talk to you much, for the prince of this world comes, but he has nothing in me. The prince of this world, who's the prince of this world? It's Satan. And he says, Satan is coming, but he has nothing in me. Can we say that? 
can we say that Satan has nothing in me? Have you been dipping and tipping and sipping from the cup of the world, the cup of the flesh, the cup of the devil, so you can't stand before the enemy? We should see ourselves men as trees walking. Say that with me. Say men as trees walking. I'm taking you on a journey, so stay with me for a little bit. In Ezekiel, see, when I'm planning this message, the, the Holy Spirit keeps moving me through the Bible. He'll remind me of this, and remind me of this, and remind me of that. And so he reminded me of this situation that we're seeing today in Christendom is not unusual. In Ezekiel chapter 8, the Lord told Ezekiel, he said, there's great abominations in the house of Israel that are driving me far from the sanctuary. And I want to put this to you. That's why we had to shut down in 2020. Because God had had it up to here with the abom. Oh, my God. I cannot believe some of the abominations I saw on TV. In something that's called a church. A woman appears, and she's got a towel wrapped around her. And then the elder, whoever, give her her panties. This is church. And then I look, and they've got two women in a tub. And the men are bathing them. This is church. And I'm like, it's abomination. So the Lord, it said in Ezekiel 8, 7, he brought me to the entrance of the court. And when I looked, there was a hole in the wall. And he said to me, dig through the hole. And so when I dug, he said, now look, see all the vile abominations that they're committing. So I went in and saw, and he saw engraved on the walls, all kinds of animals, creeping things, idols. And he saw 70 men, the elders of the house standing and they had censers in their hand and they're worshiping these false gods and this is what they're saying the Lord doesn't see us the Lord has forsaken the land and the Lord says you'll see even worse abominations than these and then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate and he saw the women weeping for Thomas the God and all these things you're seeing, all the evil that was done back then. And the Lord told them to get rid of it. The Lord told them to drive it out of the sanctuary. And sorry, we've allowed these same spirits to come back into our church and therefore into our homes and therefore into our nations. I don't know why all these things came up on my feed. As if God, anytime I'm given a message, he always confirms it. And I suppose he was confirming that, yes, this is what I want you to encourage your children today to stand on God's word. This is what he says in Deuteronomy 6, 13. You shall fear the Lord your God and serve him and swear by his name only. You shall not offer other gods. And we might think, well, we don't serve gods. But when we come into church and if we can't sing the songs of the Lord, but we're singing Beyonce and we're singing all those songs of the world, then we've got a problem. Those are other gods before the Lord. He said this in Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 15. For the Lord your God is a jealous God. The Lord your God is a jealous God. And so he wants us to diligently not just say we're Christians, but walk it out. Walk it out. And this is why it's so important. And I think one of the things that has happened, the 
the Bible is not being used in so many churches anymore, so the people are not using it. And they're listening to what the people in the pulpit are saying and believing it. And they're not going to check it out, search it out, and see, oh, wow, that's what that says? In the last few decades, our country has stepped away from its beginnings. And there are clear markers that we're moving far from God to where it is now. Like, for instance, in 1962, prayer was removed out of the schools. And as a result, the God Baal, who's a substitute God, a false God, his name means king, came first. The commandments were put aside. The commandments were outlawed. And those commandments says this, put God first. It says this, no idols, don't take his name in vain. Honor the Sabbath as we're doing now. Honor your parents. It says, do not murder. Do not commit adultery. Do not steal. Do not lie. Don't covet your neighbor's stuff, including his wife. And so we allowed Baal to take over. And then in 1973, we see the god Moloch stood up strong when abortion was legalized. Because see, the goddess, then, then in the goddess of sexuality, we see that especially in 200, 215 was legalized. And so God is telling us again, children, you need to see yourself as fruitful trees, men as trees walking. And listen, trees don't have to say, I'm a tree, I'm a tree. They just are. David reminded us that our sons should be plants grown up in their youth. And our daughters should be cornerstones polished after the similitude of a palace. Picture that. But what are we seeing today? Who's our God that we pledge our heart and our soul and our minds to? We are trees grafted in whenever we hear Israel. We are grafted in as believers into the root of Israel. Romans 11 tells us, I'm not going to read it, but if you want to look it up yourself, in Romans 11, it tells us we're grafted in to that tree. So if you're truly born again, then you should be living that new life. That old should pass away. And we need to put all the excuses aside that we use. And we need to truly repent and turn away. Turn back to the God of our fathers. Our father we can call him Abraham because we're grafted in. It says in Ephesians 2, God who is rich in mercy because of his great love which he loved us when we were dead in trespasses and sin has made us alive together with Christ. By grace we are saved and he's raised us up. And that's where we need to be in that dimension. He's raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I want to pause and let you see that dimension we as Christians are supposed to act from, behave from, think from were raised up together and made to sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So we are in a different dimension from this earthly one. We live in the earth, but we operate from a kingdom perspective. He said we're sitting in heavenly places together in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. 
for by grace you are saved and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. We are the workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And that's why he said, once you were Gentiles, once you were the uncircumcision, but now, now, we are aliens. We are strangers in this world, and our hope is in Christ, and that's how we should live. We should be trees, as trees, watered by the word. He compares our lives even to a marriage because he's the groom and we the church are the bride. And that's why he says in Ephesians 5, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify it with the washing of the water by the word so that he might present a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it should be holy and without blemish are you born again today then we should see ourselves men as trees walking this is what it says a tree when it is cut down, it will sprout again, and its new shoots will not fail, because as it scents, as it smells, scents the waters, as its roots scents the waters, it will begin to bud and put forth shoots like a plant. So we are supposed to be fruitful trees not corrupt trees. I want us to read John 15, and I wish you'd learn to walk with me in the Bible. See, this word is what's going to cause you to be strong in the Lord and to stand men as trees walking. In John 15, 16, Jesus said, you've not chosen me. I have chosen you. I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. I have chosen you. I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, fruit that remain. And as a result, whatever you ask the Father for in my name, he will give it to you because you're fruitful trees. You have not chosen me. I want you to understand, no man can come to Jesus except the Father draws him. No man can come to Jesus. The Father has to draw, and that's why when we're praying for our family, pray that the Father will draw them to Jesus. Jesus is the truth. He says, I ordained you. That means he put you down, lay you down specifically for this purpose, to be born again and to serve him with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. And listen, it's not a choice. When we come to God, it's a command. It's a command that we serve him with all our soul, all our heart, and then we make disciples. We be witnesses for him. Because out of our bellies, should come rivers of living water. We should be fruitful trees. He wants us to bring forth fruit, fruit that remain. And one such fruit I'm going to tell you today is love. And love is not what we think it is. It's not this sloppy agape. I'm not going to look at my, my, my little girl and see her do something wrong and give her a hug and a kiss and tell her I love her. No, I'm going to slap her butt. That's love. Love will correct. I'm going to slap her butt good so that she doesn't do it again. So don't think love is this 
sloppy agape that accepts everything that it sees because of love. Love is a fruit of the Spirit. And if you're truly born again, then that love is in you. Because guess what? God is love. If you're born again, love is in you. And if you love, you believe what his word says. And he says so many things that we we mistake for love. We, we think sex is love. We think same sex is acceptable. We think racism. All that stuff is not acceptable by God. And so what, what does God want us to hear today? As I come down to the end of this message, it might seem like I went here and went there and went everywhere. But I want you to begin to see yourself as purified because of the blood of Christ. It says in 1 Peter 1, 22, seeing you've purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently. So one of the fruit is love. Another fruit that we don't want to just grab a hold of is obedience. We don't want to suffer. We don't want the flesh to suffer. And I'm talking about me too. There are times when I need to fast and my flesh is like, "Mm mm-mm, not today. And sometimes you just got to tell the flesh, shut up and sit down. And you have to suffer that flesh to learn to obey God. How do you show your love for the Lord? He said in John 14, 15, if you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. You're going to obey me. That's how we show love. And it says even Jesus had to learn obedience by the things that he suffered. So then we too must learn to obey. Or before I come to the end of this message, we could bear bad fruit. Jude said, Trees whose fruit wither without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Psalm 21 tells us the fruit shall be destroyed from the earth. And that's why Jesus warns us in Matthew 7, enter in the straight gate, the narrow way, because that leads to life and that causes a lot of suffering of the flesh. But it's best you suffer from the flesh. Like somebody told me this morning, their grandson got two bullet bullet holes because he was worried. That kind of suffering we're not talking about. That's suffering for wrong. We're talking about telling your flesh, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not going there today. Everybody is, but I'm not going because I'm not getting shot. You need to see the difference. The Bible tells us we'll know them by their fruit. So you need to know who to gather with. It says, a good tree cannot bring forth evil, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. You will know them by their fruits. I want to I end with this. In Matthew 5, Jesus tells us we are the salt of the earth. And I want to tell you, some of you can cook the nicest food, but if it has no salt, it's like, oh my gosh, it's the blandest thing. But you take a little bit of salt and sprinkle over that food, and it's like you're in foodie heaven. But if salt lost its its flavor, its savor, what is it good for? We are the salt of the earth. We can't look like the world and act like the world and think like the world. We got to look like Jesus, act like Jesus, and think like Jesus. He said we're also the light of the world. We are the light of the world. He's the light, and we're the light of the world because of his, him. And we're not supposed to hide our light. And and if you're a... 
a science teacher or just been in your science class, you know if you cover a light, it goes out. We're not to hide our light. We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. We're supposed to be like the trees, Psalm 1 tells us, planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf will not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. Why? Because he walks, Psalm 1, 1 gives us the secret, he walks in the counsel of God and not the counsel of the ungodly. Who have you been listening to? Where have you been seated lately? Who have you been delighting in? Psalm 1, 2 tells us his delight is in the law of the Lord, and he meditates on God's law day and night. Finally, we need to be rooted, rooted and grounded in Christ. It tells us in Colossians chapter 2, just as you've received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue your lives in him. How? Through this word, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. One of the signs of these last days is unthankfulness. So I want to challenge you today as we end this message. Jesus says, deny yourself. That's let the flesh suffer. Sometimes you got to slap it upside and say, stop, uh-uh, not today. Pick up your cross. What is your cross? Some people, their cross sadly is loneliness. What is your cross you have to pick up and follow Christ? He wants you to bear fruit in season, out of season. He wants you to, to be a tree planted by the rivers of water that out of your belly will flow rivers of living water. Jeremiah, I'm going to end with this. Go ahead and stand with me. As we come to the end of this message, Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. I want you to hear that again. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters that spread out her roots by the river and shall not see when he comes. Her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. When Jesus walked by the fig tree, he cursed it because it had no fruit and it dried up to the roots. That's not who we are. Say men as trees walking. That's who we are living in dimension with Christ because we're reading his word not just for the sake of reading it but we're pausing and letting the Holy Ghost who lives with us 24 7 and his job is to teach us this word blessed is the man whose trust and hope is in the Lord who is your trust and your hope in today one thing you will never, ever do is regret serving God. You'll never regret it. You'll regret a lot of other things, but you'll never regret serving the Lord. You'll never regret following the Lord. Somebody told me, at, at, well, my daughter did. She said, you know what? Even if you're not a Christian and you follow Proverbs daily, you live a life that's satisfying, that is fruitful, won't get you to heaven without the blood. Are you truly born again? Today is the day to settle it. The spirit of death is everywhere. Death for the Christian. It's like when I was a little girl and they took us to the movies and we were so excited to be going to the movies. We were so excited to be up late. 
so excited, but we fell asleep in the movie house. And the next morning, we woke up in our bed. And that's how death is for the Christian. You close your eyes on this side, and you open your eyes with the Lord in heaven. That's how death is for the Christian. And we don't have to be afraid of death. Because if we are born again, we've died the first death. And that means we'll never die again. On this earth, our body will run out. Our body will shut down. But immediately, the real who we are inside of this shell will wake up with Christ. And one day in the rapture, we'll get our new bodies again. So go ahead and, and, and I, wanna cl I want you to close your eyes while I pray and challenge you. I want to challenge you today to see yourself as a tree walking living in that dimension with Christ what does that mean when the enemy looks at you he doesn't see grasshopper he doesn't see a little puny thing he sees a powerful majestic green fruit bearing tree Powered by the living water. Covered by the blood of Christ. That's who he sees. Somebody to fear. But instead, we're turning our tail and have him driving us out of so many places. And we're believing the lie of the enemy and accepting that if we don't accept their evil, then we're not diverse. And we, we, we're intolerant. Well, I'd rather be intolerant and not diverse here on earth than to live in a hell forever where the heat burns and where there's nobody around me except I can hear them crying and gnashing because it's a perfect social distancing forever. I'd rather follow Christ on this earth and so we've come to a place where we have to choose we choose to be loved by the world accepted by the world considered to be woke and considered to be diverse and considered to be tolerant or we're godly we're men like trees walking following after Christ the time has come to choose. There is no in-between. God said the ones that are in-between make me sick and I will spew them out of my mouth. You've got to choose. You've got to choose which side you're on. The side that satisfies the soul and have a ball on this earth. Or choose Christ here on this earth and in the life to come. I want to challenge you today to seek the lovely Christ. He is real. More real than your, than your necessary food, than your necessary bread. More real than your breath. He gave you that breath and he can take it away from you in a moment. Choose today. I want to encourage you to choose Christ. Choose Christ. Let those things of the world go. And you're going to find a lot of others will come and follow after you. When they see that you are serious. And when they see that it's meaningful. But we can't be both ways. we got to stop. God, he hates both ways. You got to choose, hot or cold. And may you choose Christ today. May you choose Christ today. And so I want you to make a step forward today. Decide in your heart. God is speaking to your heart. The Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart. And you've got to make that choice today.
make that choice today. I want to challenge you. Don't leave this place without making that choice. If you need to ask Him for His grace to help you make that choice, to help you understand, but make that choice today for Christ. Father, let your word touch the hearts. Let your word touch the hearts. Your word is life. Let your word touch the hearts of your people. Let revival go out across our land. Lord, that all the abominations will turn our backs on, will despise and refuse, and instead turn to you, the one true God, who says, love me with all your heart. It's not a choice, it's a command. May we choose to obey that command. And as you walk us through day by day, may we be pleasing to you and cause others to follow us because our lives speak of Christ. Thank you for it, Lord. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. God bless you. Lydia, I love you so much. Hey, Cavallas, I love you. God bless you. I'll talk with you later.